Hey everyone, we're back again. This is Brian from Massey's uh, Music Entertainment, and I'm joined again by my buddies Rich. Rich Strickler has his own channel. I'll put that link down below. And my buddy Doc. Hey, Doc, the, Doc is that proof that you should never feed strays. They'll come back home and they will never go away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but we're, we're, we're clocking it in or building our perfect uh, album. We're in uh, year 1973. And uh, we came, you know, we just got through doing 1972, so we had to come crashing back down to earth and the prospect of only having 12 songs to choose from. And uh, we uh, we had just an enormous amount of honorable mentions from that year. And uh, so it's kind of a breaking us back into this only uh, one album scenario. And that 1973 is no different. We only have 12 songs to choose from. Very tough task for us. Just a quick overview of the rules. We only can pick one song from an album now, and uh, we can pick a single as long as it's the years that the single actually charted, and we can pick album cuts as long as the song was on that album the year it was released. So other than that, if an artist had particularly had two albums released in the same year, you could obviously pick uh, a song from a different album as well, but that seems to be less and less likely as we move forward in time, so... This week, guys, what do you think? 1973, what is it? It. What do you think? There's 12 songs. Yet. Well, it it's, uh, I'd say you see a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more off or deeper on some things. Um, but I think we've seen that in the last couple of years anyway, that we can uh, move a little outside the norm on what actually fits us. This is, we're going to go through the list again. We were talking off camera there, you know, the honorable mention list is going to go on for another three minutes at the end of these videos anyway, because there's so many tens. It's 1973, man. <laughs> yeah. Another one, you can have 60 songs. Yeah, as I was telling you guys off uh, camera, 73 for me, I'm going to like my honorable mention list much better than the actual songs I picked. <laughs> for whatever reason, I wanted to go with a... Uh, a list of songs that I don't talk about that much, but I really like some of the more popular or iconic songs are on my honorable mention list that you guys may have. You may not. Everybody out there will know those songs, but I, uh, I did what I wanted to do with the single album. The single album really forces you to make some tough decisions where the double album, you can play it both ways. You can put one on, if you have a couple of tunes from an album, get, let's say you can put one on one album, one on the other, or, whatever and you can still uh, feel good about it but this single album we're spoiled because we were doing three straight doubles and we had more flexibility now it's like you got to make a decision and live and die with it and that's what we're doing so it should be fun Perfect. but i can't wait to see what you guys have well rich based on what you just said i'm glad you're going first so we can go ahead and, and have this suspense <laughs> bubble pop right off the bat. I want to hear right what off the bat, you, pick, for sure. you would like the honorable mentions more than that. So you're leading us off, buddy. All Let's right. go. Let's take a shot. Uh, my lead off track, Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run, title track of the album from that year. McCartney is playing pretty much all the instruments. He's playing guitar. He's playing bass. He's playing drums. His drum and bass player had quit the band right before that. So he's he's with Linda McCartney and Denny Lane. There's a three-man band who are Wings. And Paul's really in the studio producing this stuff. And uh, he's like a uh, multi-instrumentalist, does a great job. This song and this album is sort of an escape or freedom kind of theme going on here. The, the, uh, escaping from... Uh, whatever the jail and, and he uses that metaphor too uh the mighty crash and we fell into the sun and the first one second the second one there i hope you're having fun bah! it's a three-part uh med medley you've got a slow ballad in the beginning then it's kind of a funky rock style and then mm -hmm. at the end it's sort of a country-ish vibe really cool song good album uh on my channel we did the album a couple weeks ago and uh, there's a lot of good songs on it but i took that title track just to set the pace of 1973 for me, Band on the Run. It's a good kickoff starting uh, song. And next up is Dream On by Aerosmith off their debut album uh, out of Boston, Mass. This band here, they're sort of a American version of the Rolling Stones in a way that, you know, they may not be as great, but they have that similar frontman 
Steven Tyler is the uh, Aerosmith version of Mick Jagger. Joe Perry on the guitar. He's like Keith Richards. They're modeled after that band with the, the bluesy kind of hard rock. Uh, I've always loved Dream On. Uh, it's a signature song for them. And uh, it's one a single that charted twice, as a matter of fact. In 73, it only made it to number 87 on the U.S. charts. Uh. And in 76, they re-released it as a single, and it went to number 10. So it's an interesting, uh, weird uh, way that developed, but it is what it is. But I, I took it from the album cut of 73. Next, is in the, uh, speaking of Rolling Stones, I went with Angie off the Goat's Head Soup album. I love this song. It went to number one, uh, kind of like an acoustic-driven power ballad, if you will. Uh, Angie could be based on a number of people that speculated she was David Bowie's wife, Angela. Uh, also, Keith Richards' newborn daughter, Dandelion Angela, was her middle name. And there's even a theory where it's based on Angie Dickinson, but I, I, that's a stretch. But the great song, uh, mixed voice in this is fantastic. A slow ballad, like I said, but uh, quality all the way through. One of my favorite Stones tunes, easily in my top 10. So I'm off to a little bit of a, a, a slower pace here, but then I go into some Southern rock. Uh, the flute instrumental here, Can't You See by the Marshall Tucker Band. Love this song. Uh, kind of a country vibe, southern rock, like I said. Written and sung by Toy Caldwell, who was a Vietnam vet. He was injured over in uh, Nam in 68. Came back, formed a band with his brother and a couple other friends. And away they go. They were not at the level of Allman Brothers or Leonard Skinner, but they had a nice career and if, you know if you're into the marshall tucker band they put, put out a lot of good music uh basically it's a guy the song can't you see is about a guy trying to get away from his troubles uh he's going to take a freight train far as he can go he's going to jump off a mountain nobody's going to know dig a hole climb inside and die kind of a depressing dark song but melodic sing-along tune love it my fifth song is hall and out she's gone Another one of these beautiful, heartfelt, soul ballad sign, uh, songs from the Abandoned Luncheonette album, Hall & Oates. Daryl Hall got that really cool, soulful voice. Mm -hmm. Blue-eyed soul. John Oates, his partner, his background, guitar player. These two met in uh, at Temple University in Philadelphia, formed a friendship and a band, and the rest is history, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. And I'm going to end my side A with Steely Dan from the Countdown to Ecstasy album, My Old School. Uh, basically about a drug bust at Bard College where they met uh, in Annandale, New York. And that lyric is mentioned in the song. Again, Becker and Fagan, the songwriters, the heart of Steely Dan. They bring in these other musicians sometimes to add a little oomph to the uh, music. Uh, it's about a drug bust. Uh, I was smoking with the boys upstairs when I heard about the old affair. I said, oh, no, William and Mary won't do. I'm never going back to my old school. So he's, they're thinking they're going to get kicked out of school for getting busted and this and that. But it, it's got a great sax solo, another guitar, uh, killer guitar solo in here as well. So that's going to make my list. Do we Dan in back-to-back -back years for me, 72 and 73. So before you started, you you gave a prediction of a trifecta at zero. Would you like to change your answer, no. Rich? Okay, you're going to go with that. Okay, I've got okay. I've got two of yours so far. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Hmm. Okay, I okay. understand. I don't think that's I'll be good happen. before we get there. Uh, but I'll say that this that side, you know, hey, like this. Uh, we come back and say, you know, hey, you know, Brian, you say that sounds like you, Doc, or I say that sounds like you, Brian. That sounds like you, Rich. Yeah, that does yeah. sound like you. Um, that Hall and Oates pick kind of caught me off guard. Pretty uh, underrated band, actually. When you get down to it, uh, they don't get talked a lot about, you know, because they're they weren't the flavor for even my teenage years and even at that era and stuff like that. That was a mess. You know, into your fifties now, man. You look back and like, freaking man, a lot of yeah. talent in there. They they yeah. they are talented. I didn't like their style once they got into the MTV age either. Yeah, sure. I like this this early tune where she's gone. I think it's an excellent song. Yeah, and they they really provide a great vocal on it and the back and forth between the two of them. Good mm -hmm. stuff. 
I didn't realize that. The one that surprised me the most, even though it's you know it's Steely Dan, is I didn't know whether you were high on Countdown, Countdown to Extinction or not. I did, I, I wasn't sure. I knew you were high on Katie Lied, but I wasn't I'm, sure about. Yeah, I'm high on all their albums. This not so much as Asia or Countdown or uh, what's the other one, uh, Royal Scam. I like right. Katie Lied, but th- this maybe fifth or sixth on the lineup of albums, but. This particular song I really like. My okay. old yeah. So I ch- kind Anything of else? that one. Everything else just feels like rich. Yeah, yeah it does. Those, yeah. Those, those middle. Got that vibe. That Angie, can't you see? She's gone. Dream on. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Even band on the run to a degree. Yeah. All right. Next up, I'm going to go side two. Uh, let me just briefly look here. This, this should be along the same lines, really. Uh, I'm going to kick it off with a really uh, a nice rocking tune here with that big drum in- uh, that drum intro and the cowbell. Grand Funk Railroad, we're an American band. Love this song. This, this is just a, a killer uh, classic rock song, party song. You know, they're you know, just talking about living the life in the 70s. Uh, the drummer, Don Brewer, was the lead singer on this particular song. Does a great job. Uh, talking about playing cards and getting high and all that good stuff. So it's a great, great song. Uh, actually, this song came out I, when I was 16 years old in 1973. And I, a long story, but I, I spent a lot of time in a hospital that year, like six months in a hospital in traction. And I remember this song coming out. It was the whole ward where I was was into that song. Just a little background. Now, the second song, Dixie Chicken by the little band Little Feet. This is a little southern southern funk. Lowell George, the front man, lead singer, uh, kind of an underrated band. Good musicians on this uh, band here. Little Feet, another uh, talent we lost. Lowell George died at only thirty four years of age. They would have had a much better career, more well known. They pretty much a seventies band. Uh, you know, I like the line here. If you'll be my Dixie Chicken, I'll be your Tennessee Lamb. And we can walk together in D- Dixieland. You know, it's got a little yodel, lo, 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 you know, kind of cool, cool tune. Next, I'm going to stick with a little bit of Southern rock here. Leonard Skinner, Simple Man, uh, from their first album, Pronounced Leonard Skinner. Uh, this is a song, depending on how your mood is at the time, how vulnerable you are, th- this can bring you to tears. Basically, it's a mother talking to her son, yeah. life lessons, advice, kind of powerful. You know, if you live your life the right way, you know, be a simple man and this and kind of, this, that kind of thing. Ronnie Van Zant, the uh, vocalist, tremendous performance here. And I like the double guitar action of Alan Collins and Gary uh, Rossington, who formed their own band later after Skinner had uh, dissolved from the plane crash. Just a great, great song. One of those power ballads, with killer guitar. Next, I'm going to slow it down a pace. And go to the old Fleetwood Mac, the pre-Buckingham Nick's Fleetwood Mac. Bob Welch was the lead singer here. It's a song called Hypnotized off the Mystery to Me album. Fleetwood Mac, kind of a haunting, mysterious uh, tune here. It puts you in like a trance when you're listening. It literally almost hypnotizes you. The, the, the title of that, trunk, the, that song excuse me, puts you in some, such a vibe and captures you. I, I love it. And it's got that drum beat by Nick Fleetwood. It sets the tone. Uh, excellent song. Anybody that wants to know what Fleetwood Mac was like prior to Stevie and Lindsay, go back and listen to this song. Bob Welch, kind of a, an underrated artist. Now I'm going to stick on side uh, two here, my fifth song, an Eagles ballad, Desperado, from the, uh, so the title track from the same name, Desperado, Henley and Fry. I think it's the second song they ever wrote together, believe it or not. Beautiful song. Uh, Don Henley on lead vocals, soft rock, country rock. Uh, The album had a theme of the Old West, kind of an outlaw uh, idea behind it. Uh, Western, uh, Desperado, real real deep lyrics, interesting tune. Uh, It was not released as a single, but somehow it became one of their signature songs. They closed a lot of shows with it. Linda Ronstadt also had a, uh, a 
cover version, which is excellent. And finally, I'm winding up my album with the great Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, the title track. Mm. Another incredible soft rock ballad. I seem to be a theme here. Uh, <laughs> leaving that limelight behind, get on back to the farm, you know, simpler life again. Uh, Bernie Taupin in rare form with the lyrics. Uh, where the dogs of society howl, you can't plant me in your penthouse. I'm going back to my plow, back to the howling old owl in the woods, hunting the horny back toad. I finally decided my future lies beyond the yellow brick road. Just incredible lyrics, great vocal, great band behind him. It's a short song for uh, Elton, but it, it works. I had a hard time leaving a funeral for a friend, Love Lies Bleeding, which arguably is the best song on the album, but I went with Goodbye Yellow Brick Road to close it out. We had a we had another one alike on this side, and then also I had a song, but not the same song from Dixie Chicken from Dixie Chicken album. So I, I get there. So that's that that was a really nice surprise that you had that you had little feet there. I like that a lot. Yeah. I like that pick. And I got a different that's one from Goodbye Yellow Brick Road for sure. So so close. Yeah, I think all around things there and stuff. Uh, I'll say it when we get to the end and stuff like that. I'm surprised you didn't have one song on your list, to be honest with you. Okay. So, hmm. um, Could be on my honorable uh, mentions. Well, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> but, uh, it's just, I'm just surprised it wasn't on under top 12. Yeah. That's, that's what I would say. But, I mean, hey, it's a great list. But, yeah, and we're all around a lot of things here. As we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Cool. Nice. All right. Get her up, Ryan. Is it my turn again? Yeah. Okay. All right. So leading it off for me is the same the same lead off song that Rich had. I had Band on the Run. Oh, come on, man. McCartney. I'm serious. I had Band on the Run, Paul McCartney and Wings. That's kind of a, you know, a little bit of a, it's like there's his super anthem that it, yeah. he had uh, for his band. You know, I mean, everybody has their... That, that's his stairway to heaven maybe you might want to say that it is because it kind of has these different parts of the song that are all completely yeah. different and uh but it all works together very well you know so um i remember hearing this song when i was a kid you know um played on the a track in my <laughs> my brother david's band <laughs> it was a ter terrible <laughs> images to have now you know these old bands where you didn't even have seats <laughs> that you're required to sit in right, right you're right. just sitting on the floor of the van and when he stops everybody goes flying through the thing so <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah i have that starting off it's a great song uh sure is definitely sure how to add that so number two for me is leonard skinner's simple man Yay! Uh, yeah i mean so that's why i said you want to sure you don't want to change your answers so uh great song uh i i love i love the message that it sends kind of like you know a little maybe a little boy sitting on you know sitting on his uh mom or his grandmother's lap and they're, they're giving him life lessons yeah. um about how he should conduct himself as a man very uh traditional ways of the of the south uh type of stuff so it was really cool i really liked it yeah. uh number three for me is a different song from goodbye yellow brick road and i just love this piano driven it's gray seal yeah. oh it's just got this wonderful energetic uh, yeah. piano to it you know and uh uh just rises and falls constantly throughout the song and uh i really love elton's voice in it my favorite song on the album maybe one of my top five favorite songs by elton in general uh great great tune number four for me is going to be zz tops lagrange you know da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. i mean just this yeah. classic anthemic song that you would listen to maybe when you're cruising down the road and yeah. uh um later on i if you listen to um a song by tom petty uh amazing i'm trying to think of, uh there's a song called amazing grace that's what it was listen to that uh by tom petty he just it, it almost sounds like he's got the same guitar riff to it so i think it's really? sa saving grace i think it's called saving grace saving that's grace. it that's yeah. the song i remember listening to that later on got the that's same amazing. guitar riff to it it does uh really it's really cool though so uh, number five for me, I've got uh, "Higher Ground" by Stevie Wonder. Oh, uh, good one! Yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to have something by Stevie, and Stevie's going yes. on his run here. Uh, I love this song. Uh, 
terribly so. It was covered by the Red Hot Chili Peppers in 1989, and they did this ska punk version of the song that that does not stand the test of time whatsoever. At the time, I didn't mind it, but it, I was, you know, 19 years old, so of yeah. course I didn't mind it all that much. Now I really don't like it at all, uh, but you should definitely listen to Stevie's version of it. Uh, Stevie's run of albums here, you got Talking Talking Book and Inner Visions and Music of the Mind and uh, Songs in the Key of Life are all going to be just big, big time albums for him. So, And closing out my side here, I've got uh, maybe a deep cut is from Tom Waits' Closing Time. I hope that I don't fall in love with you. Uh, kind of this little introspective ballad about a guy hanging out at a bar and he's secretly pining over a woman at the end of the bar, but he doesn't have the courage to go up and talk to her. So he's kind of going over these various scenarios in which he could get that courage up to go talk to her. But before you know it, the, the night's winding down. She's already left with somebody else and he's still stuck there all alone at the end of the night. So Tom's really, really great songwriter. As He's one of those artists where I say, well, even if you don't like his singing, if you could just get past that and, and, and look at his lyrics, he's just a very talented guy, um, uh, very talented. And I wanted to close off the side with something that was a little bit more introspective like that song. So that's my side one, guys. Love it. Very cool. I love very the, cool uh, I like the ZZ Top LaGrange pick. That's That was one that was on my initial top 12 and i bumped it but i have it on my honorable mentions yeah and the first yeah. two we came out of the shoot swinging band on the run and simple man i had them both yeah i know I, that's why i thought i said wow i said i don't know if yeah. he's gonna hold up to zero i didn't know it was gonna hold to zero but I'm hey still stick and do it all right <laughs> all right he's counting on doc he's counting on doc to like throw a monkey wrench into <laughs> so this pressure thing, right? sometimes going last I can, man <laughs> i can see a little deep purple uriah heap and black sabbath coming from doc but that's another yeah exactly <laughs> uh, okay let's jump into side two so side two i've got a song that rich has already named too i've got dream on by aerosmith uh i remember this being like a big song for them you know i'm okay. you know even if you uh weren't that much into Aerosmith. You at least knew a couple songs by then. This and Sweet Emotion are going to be two songs that people would always know by Aerosmith. I thought the imagery kind of alluded to drug use a little bit, right? You know, every time I look in the mirror, all these lines on my face getting clearer. Could be a person, you know, snorting cocaine off of a mirror. Uh, that, I always kind of looked at that like as possible imagery that they were uh, alluding to. Um, uh, Aerosmith, drug use, that's not really a far stretch. I mean, so it's possible, I guess. Um, <laughs> number, number two for me, I've got On Your Way Down from Little Feet from Dixie Chicken. My favorite uh -huh. song, my favorite song by them. Rich is absolutely right. Uh, it's a shame that we just didn't get more material from them, but it's like all these, all these great bands that careers cut short and, uh, and you don't get to hear the full extent of their talent. So, uh, that's my favorite song off of that album. I want to check that out. Uh, I've got a Marvin song at number three here. I got Let's Get It On, the self-titled uh, self track from his uh, album. Uh, Marvin, again, just like Stevie, I've got Marvin in that high regard, too, is that he has like a collection of albums uh, in, this, in this span where he had What's Going On, he had, and then he has Let's Get It On. He also has a Trouble Man soundtrack which is fantastic if you haven't heard it. And I think also one called I uh, Hear My Dear, I think is another one. Um, he just had a real stretch of albums here with it all great. And uh, I like this song a lot. So I wanted to put it on here. A little bit of a deeper cut here. I've got uh, The Rain Song by Led Zeppelin as my number four pick. Not a song that most people would traditionally pick from you know Led Zeppelin in general, but I really, I really like the song. I, I'd like the guitar work in it and the energy that's, that comes across in it so uh it's got that it, it just feels like this, this thundering rain you know from the guitars like dun, 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 dun. i mean it just feels like there's pounding rain going on during the song so it's great number five for me i've got john kale's uh title track from his album paris 1919 so if you listen to this song and you're not going to ever suspect this guy was ever a member of the Velvet Underground. So, I mean, such a different album. It was held in absolutely no regard whatsoever. It was considered a commercial flop. Uh, didn't sell records for anything. Now it's considered like, you know, one of the top, you know, 
500 albums of all time that you have to listen or at least on list it says you have to listen to it before you die this is a really great track it's got these wonderful very tight string arrangement that's going on in it and uh um his voice is actually very sound in it i wasn't sure how i was going to take his voice based on what i had heard from velvet so um it's really great so but ending it off i've got a song that rich already has as well i've got angie by the rolling stones uh kind of like a little power ballad by them uh, like he's already alluded to there was several suggestions about who it could be about uh he's probably right the angie dickinson one seems a way out there as a, as a possibility but then again it's the 70s you just never know so what's going on. <laughs> just never know what's going on behind closed doors anymore so uh, yeah. i thought it was a fitting track to to end off in 1973 to have a stones tune usually i'd lead off with a stones tune on this particular year i'm closing out with a stones tune that's yeah. it guys awesome awesome buddy yeah i love the awesome ad. Love that you had Angie on there for sure. Um, great. Stevie Wonder, Higher Ground. Great song. Can't great tell. song. Yeah, yeah, some deeper cuts in there too. Yeah. Um, was it John Cale? Who was the other deep cut? Uh, I had Tom Waits. I hope Tom I don't follow yeah. with you. I, yeah. I love Tom Waits, but I don't know him inside out like maybe you do. But uh, he's hit or miss with me, but I think he's a great lyricist for sure. Yeah. Great songwriter. Just yeah, really is. great stuff. Yeah, maybe this one's not as commercially accessible as stuff like he had with, you know, maybe Rain Dogs or Sword yeah. Fish Trombones or stuff like that. But, it you know, Closing Time to me just felt like he was at the beginning of his career. Yep. Um, the songs were much more personal, and I and I, that's why I like the album so much more. So. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. So, Doc, you got to save us. You know, one of you know, we got to we got to prove Rich wrong here. Somebody got to try Pecta, right? If we don't have one, would this be the first year we don't have one? Just curious. I think so. I think it would be. be the first one. Guess we'll see how it goes here, right, boys? Okay. I think he might have one now that he's smirking over there. I think he might have one. <laughs> I'm just just checking. I'm just asking. That's all I'm doing. That, you know what? This this will sound like a doc album, I think. Anyway, Brian. So this is all I'm going to say, buddy. So, yeah. like range starts off for me, man. There you go. Um, ZZ Top. Uh, there you go. Yeah. No. Oh, great in concert. Great live band. This is an iconic rock song, man. And yeah. Yeah, that riff is just the catch, man. <laughs> That's uh, and even his voice. You know, uh, Billy sounds fantastic at the beginning, <laughs> telling that story. You know, the rest of in town. <laughs> That Texas down. <laughs> it's that's fantastic. It's a great tune, man. The Grange is just a rocking tune. So yeah, definitely starting off that way for me. Rich, you called it earlier. Number two. Yes, they did have an album, buddy. Deep Purple did have an album, man. My woman from Tokyo is coming out with yeah. number two, man. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Great rocking tune, man. It is. Uh, you know, you don't have to like Deep Purple to not like this tune, man. This is a this is a rock song. Um, even like hypnotic and different sounds at the beginning of the song before the drop actually happened, you know, they get into a great guitar riff and, um, yeah, it's a big deep purple tune for me, you know, nothing going to be with me forever, but this is, uh, uh, my one from Tokyo, man, it's a classic rock song in my eyes. So it's coming with me, man. Number three. The greatest driving song of all time. I don't know how you guys did not have this, man. Frig, I don't. I, maybe it's just me, man. You know, you can't come in my car. It's radar love. It's golden earring, man. Yeah, um, I have okay. it on my honorables. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what can you say about that, man? That's just a great man, golden earring, man. They could be the longest serving band of all time right now. I think they started in like '61 or something like that, man. So they've been around forever, and they're still they're still going. So. But, you know, they don't have many hits and stuff like that. They have a couple things throughout the times, but Radar Love is a classic. And, uh, yeah, this is Put Your Fiddle to the Metal, man. Uh, that's, a, that's a driving tune if there ever was one. So Radar is on my list. I got to be honest with myself, man. My number four tune, I'm sure you guys probably don't know this one. It's a song called Weeping Widow by April Wine. Um, this is a cool, really cool sounding uh, heavier side but just really good guitar and it's a rock song um and 
like I said, April Wine gets overlooked in a lot of senses, man. They got a lot of great songs. And if you were to dive on this band, you'd, you'd be happily surprised if you don't know them. But uh, a lot of catchy tunes, a lot of good rock songs, I think. And did it for a long time. Weeping Widows are a pretty cool tune, man. And I love it. So uh, if you get a chance, check it out if you don't know it. This one you might be mad at me for, my next pick. I don't know why. Because, yeah, I'm a big Aerosmith fan. Uh, or 70s Aerosmith fan, maybe I should phrase this here. Um, I, and I like a lot of the deep stuff too. I had like five, six songs written down for Aerosmith off that first album. Man. I, I could have gone anywhere here. And I did. So I, did, I didn't go Dream On. I went Mama Ken for me. Um, yep. Yeah, this is a rock song, man, from Aerosmith. And, you know, Brian, you touched on it earlier. Are those guys doing drugs or anything else? And stuff? <laughs> Freaking right they were, man. These guys were out. <laughs> these guys, these guys were. Uh, they had some serious problems, man. But um, and that's Aerosmith in the seventies, and that's what led to uh, some really good music, man. There's no getting around this. This is what led for a lot of different artists out there. You know, they all have their vices. Mama Ken's a great rock team, man. Fantastic riff. Perry sounds fantastic. Tyler sounds fantastic. Uh, it's been covered a few times too. Even Guns N' Roses does a really good cover of this tune, actually. So. And the shock of all shocks to end my side, eh? Uh, Brian, you know, it's a rocking side to me. So I'm going elected by Alice Cooper, man. Um, yeah, I like that song. Yeah, it's a great tune. I had trouble narrowing it down for a Cooper tune too, man, because I had a lot of songs and um, it's just the way it bounced out. I had Hello Ray. Hooray. I also love that tune from that album as well. Um, just to see more rocking footage for me than Electric Nins. And I could flip a coin any day. So Electric's just... Uh, a great Cooper tune, and once again, catchy. It's a rock song, and it's right in my wheelhouse, man. That's my side A. I like it. So I got a question. So you're telling us that we won't be seeing, and I don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith on your list in the future? <laughs> yeah, you can take that one to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, great great pick on LaGrange. I mean, yeah. I I love that song so much, and I'm thinking to myself, when they were writing the lyrics for that, did someone actually write down a mao, 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 mao? I mean, does someone write that down on the sheet? <laughs> That's great stuff. I think it's an fantastic. Ad I think it's an ad lib for. Uh, That's great though. Billy. If it is, it's the greatest ad lib in rock music. Yeah, yeah, Billy did a good job there, man. They got that bluesy, awesome riff, eh? So. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like classic. that, and I like the uh, radar love pick, which I had as an honorable mention. Uh, April Wine, you know, they're from Canada, so I understand you grew up with them. They weren't that big down here for whatever reason. They weren't. Yeah. They yeah. were not. Yeah, I mean, I know people can seek them out that are uh, harder rock fans or whatever, but I, I never took the plunge and they weren't played on the radio that much. So I don't have a real good feel for them, but I know they're popular in Canada, which is cool. Yeah, they are. Yeah, pretty popular. That's guess sure. who were popular down here, but April Wine wasn't for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a few acts crack pretty big and some haven't, right? So right. Yeah, it works that way sometimes. Yeah. That's my side A, guys. That's good. Let's see what you got on the uh, flip side, man. There's a couple on this side here. I would have thought maybe I would have heard from either one of you guys at any given time, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay. It's the who, man. Love rain over me, man. Um, oh. to start off my uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah, that was one that I struggled with. Um, I love the song. I, I think this is one of the greatest rock songs ever, to be it honest is, with yeah. you. And um, first song I wrote down, I didn't know how my album was going to unfold, so it was, it was starting off or it's starting off a side. But uh, love rain over me, man. This is another who at the peak kind of thing, man. Yeah. I love Doctor Jimmy in here, man. I love some different things off. Of, that's a great tune too, man. Off quad. Um, Love Ray or me, man, is I don't know. Daltry sounds fantastic. The towns and sounds fan. Uh, this is the who at the peak, man. Um, you're coming off of who's next, and you're coming out with this, man. And yeah. there's some really good tunes off Quadrophenia, man. And this is the best one. Close, but this is the best one for me. And it's yeah. it's really high on my list. I'm an all timer, so. <sighs> I can see why somebody might not have my next tune or anything from this album on their album. Um, Cause maybe it's just too hard or maybe it doesn't fit or whatever, but I'm taking time from dark side, man. Um, yeah. 
It's my favorite album. Yep. It's my favorite album of all time. I could listen to this at any time. I don't, and picking a song is difficult because it's a listen. The well, album's a listen. I get that. Yeah. But Time is a fantastic tune, man. And you, know, it, you can listen to it on its own and still be pretty happy, I think. So um, sure. it's an all-timer again for me. Um, there's a lot of songs that are going to miss my list for different reasons, but this is Sean's album, man. Time's coming. Mm -hmm. So. This one I would have thought we might have hit the trifecta on. This is what I was kind of. This one I had marked down as I said when I said one. I thought this would be it. It's goodbye, Yellow Brick Road for me, for Elton. I have, um, yeah. Um, big Elton fan too, man. I'm big fans of a lot of music, obviously, and we all are. But uh, right there again, you know, Elton, Bernie popping out a, a monster on this one, like you mentioned earlier, which is not that long. It doesn't have to be. Uh -oh. um it's storytelling of just what it is inside that fantasy story that they're telling you at the time right so it's mm -hmm. bernie's awesome man uh, elton you know he uh he writes the music and stuff but bernie man he's, he's got you know, on some mixed up and funky and out there lyrics almost on every two when he gets something in there and he just takes your mind with you and then that you're just going on his road and that's where it goes so yeah. Goodbye, Yellow Road is exactly that kind of tune, man. The iconic song. You might be mad at me again for my fourth tune. So it is pronounced Leonard Skinner. Yes. Um, Simple Man's a fantastic tune, guys, but I went Tuesday's Gone. Um, what a good one, though. Yeah. Uh, we're just uh, missing every time. <laughs> I know. I like, we're all around it. What do you want to hear? I <laughs> <laughs> so I said, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tuesday's gone. Uh, like I said, six months from now, flip a coin, man. I got simple man on this list, and I, I wouldn't be upset, right? So, um, yeah, because I do love that guitar riff, man, and that drop and the storytelling about you know, yeah, the mother and the son, and you know, a life yeah. lesson here in that song. But Tuesday's gone is, um, a little bit softer for me. And I think it was even a different side for Leonard Skinner. Is that's as far as they would go for that side, you know, where they have lots of songs, man. That, that album's fantastic. So, and, yeah. you know, Free Bird is Free Bird and stuff like that. But um, Tuesday's Gone is what I'm taking, man. That's the way it is. So, don't know why you guys didn't have Piano Man on there. That's just me, I guess. But that's my next two. So, um, yeah, I say this a lot, you know, but this is a top 10 song for me in my life. So Piano Man is making my list, uh, no matter what. <laughs> so um, I think it's his best song. I, I think Captain Jack's fantastic off this album as well, but uh, <laughs> Piano Man is uh, his best song for me. And he'll have other songs probably show up as we move along in life here, but uh, yeah. um, fantastic piano storytelling. Oh. I don't know what else to say about this. This is, uh, I like those stories. I like those storytellings. I like songs that have, uh, that take you on an adventure sometimes. And this is probably the best one. So for me. And I end my side B with Go Figure. We hit the trifecta, guys. It is banned on the run. So, um, and this was a late, late change for me, too, you know, because I love Jet from this album, too. And I like, you know, um, I like the faces, ooh, la, la. I had them all kind of oh, like yeah. floating in there as well in my head and stuff and how things were going to go. And then it's just the band on the run. I like the three sequence that you talked about yeah. earlier. I think, Rich, when you talk three songs in one uh, and it takes you on a, another ride. And Paul's writing something awesome here, man. And band on the run is great, too. So I'll let my side be there. Well, we came close to not making it. But Whoa, we almost didn't make it. In the last song. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, like I told you guys, my uh, honorable mentions are better than my album. That's why some of the stuff, well, you guys both have stuff that I had my honorable mentions, but I, I just wanted to change it up a little bit this time. I, I knew you were going to have something from Dark Side. I just didn't know which yeah. song. I mean, I had, I had honorable mentions. I had three songs off of Dark Side. But, the they, album. but but because but because the album is a concept album, just didn't feel right pulling them out and putting them in. That's now, right. love rain, love rain over me. You can make a better case for that song because that's a repeating motif throughout the whole album. I mean, 
the whole quad album, when I listen to it again, there's a lot of times where Love Rain Over Me is interjected in various parts of that album long before the song is even played, you yeah. know? But the song is a great standalone track, you know. It's uh, fantastic, too. So that's yeah, that that's a great that's a great song. I could like I could definitely see that one. I wasn't sure how you were going to play the dark side one. I didn't know which song you were going to pick, and I just uh, you know I, the time is is it my favorite song? I have to listen to the whole album, and I'll be. It doesn't matter, you know. It could be us and them next. And could, them, you know, yeah. Brain damage. I get. I don't know what's going to be next. Man. And breathe. I don't know. It's, I'm going to be all over the map. You know. Great gig in the sky, man. Um, yeah, that could have made my list for crying out loud. Um, but time, I'll just take it on the intro. I love the intro for time. I think that's yeah, it's cool. Uh, it's pretty cool. iconic too. So uh, like that, that's the way you're gonna start a song with something funky and something different, man. Go listen to time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's excellent. Cool. I mean, I, I like that. I like the Billy Joel pick too. I, I know it didn't yeah. make it here yet, but he will make it in the future for me. Uh, a couple times i know for sure it just this one just didn't quite make it so what do you got for uh honorable mentions doc what did you have me yeah i had everything off of aerosmith's first album i had dark side of the moon i had um <laughs> <laughs> i had daniel yeah. i had crocodile rock i yeah. had um turn the page actually came out that year as well me too uh, I told you about that. I had the, I didn't have any Zeppelin. I mentioned Ooh La La earlier, which just missed for me, and Keep Yourself Alive from Queen just for miss, miss for me too as well. And I like that. I had Stir It Up. I had Desperado. You had mentioned that one earlier. Yeah. I can't Just See. I have uh, Rosalita. Yeah. Uh, I would have thought you might have had something like right. that from Bruce maybe popping yeah. in. I had The Joker. Yep. The Real Me. And Do You Feel Like We Do? Uh, <laughs> I mean, mm. This Flight Tonight. Razmanaz and um, woke up this morning. All from Nazareth were all on my short list as well. Wow! Yep. Wow! I have a lot of them myself. I'm just going to run through mine real quick. I have yeah, "Your Name" by Carly Simon. I have "Time in a Bottle" and "I Got a Name" by Jim Croce. Ramblin' Man, Almond Brothers, "Turn the Page," Bob Seger. Long Train Running in China Grove from the Doobie Brothers. Living in the Past, Jethro Tull, Rosalita, Bruce Springsteen. Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, Elton John. Stuck in the Middle with You, Steelers Wheel. Free Ride, Edgar Winter. Radar Love, Golden Earring. Uh, Living for the City and Higher Ground by Stevie. Yep. American Tune, Paul Simon. These Days, Jackson Brown. LaGrange, ZZ Top. The Joker, Steve Miller. Love Train, OJs. Piano Man and Captain Jack, Billy Joel. Let It Ride, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Love Rain Over Me, The Who, Tuesday's Gone Skinner, Ooh La La Faces, and <laughs> every song, I mean every song, on Dark Side of the Moon and Houses of the Holy. I couldn't pick one out of these those two albums, so I wow. put them all in the honorable mentions. I think, Rich, you just rang off my whole album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I had a great album. What do you want me to say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we should have just bit the bullet. Side. We should have just bit the bullet and said that we should just have this as a double album. The double. <laughs> yeah. What do you have, Brian? Any, what are you doing, other, right? Any honorable? What do you have, Brian? You guys already listed like everything that I you guys had there. <laughs> we listed every song that year. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy stuff. So I love it. Oh yeah, bro. one I didn't mention was Gene Genie. Also, then I didn't have oh, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to look it. up. The weeping, the weeping widow, widow one. Yeah, I check that out. I, I'm not familiar with the song. Yeah, so I, I don't I know that song up. either. So it's a good rock and tune. I, I, I got. Like I always have I to. I, like I always it. write these down. I go back and I, I listen to them. So now the other one I want to throw out is a, a personal favorite of mine from my one of my favorite bands, America, Ventura Highway. Got to throw that out there. Oh wow! Which album is that from, Rich? Homecoming. Homecoming. Okay. All right. They have a song called Cornwall Blank that I really like. That's, that's on Horn Homecoming also. Is it also on that one? Okay. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess that'll wrap it up then, right? That's that's wrap it up for 1973, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Doc. Appreciate it, buddy, for being here. Yeah, Rich, I really appreciate being here. If you guys awesome. get a chance to check out our other videos, please do. We started in 1965. Uh, we worked our way through, uh, slowly building up uh, a lot of views on those. We really appreciate if you would like or subscribe. Please comment. Give me your, give us your top 12. That would be great, too. 
Uh, we're really trying to get the ball rolling on these videos and, uh, and uh, we'd appreciate any support. So until the next time, everybody, we'll see you and take care of yourselves out there. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.